So, the bigger the knife, the better when it comes for a knife that is going to be used on the wilderness, may it be the woods, jungle, whatever wilderness purpose you will have in mind, whatever uh, nature, survival you, you may think of, a bigger blade is going to be better. There's nothing wrong with this, these smaller ones, that, the bushcraft type little knives, but truth is when it comes to making shelter, when it comes to having a compromise between a knife and an axe or a, sort of like a machete, bigger is going to be better. Here I have something that is typical Argentine, this is uh, a Facon knife, it's called. It has an 11 inch blade, it's pretty big. It's not that thick, but it's thick, uh, thick enough. And you could use easily baton through a piece of wood with this and it's not going to be breaking or anything. This is typical carbon steel, just like this one. Typical carbon steel, high carbon content. This is what most <laughs> yeah, self-claimed experts claim to be the best possible steel for, for a survival knife. They will say, no, the best survival knife has to be carbon steel. Well, this is carbon steel, guys. And we're going to be talking about different types of steel later. But look how it it gets all... Baby. Well, this isn't pitted. This is. This is pitted all over it. This isn't pitted, but it stains easily so it's it is stained it, it's not stainless it's stained full <laughs> this knife was intended for general purpose use for cutting wood for processing meat for killing game killing cows killing animals uh, skinning them uh, fighting especially fighting this blade was used for all of that even for eating the gauchos would grab the knife like this and they wouldn't keep it very sharp over here because they would grab it like this and use it for eating. They wouldn't be using, uh, they, w they wouldn't be using plates or or anything like that or forks. They would just bite with their teeth the piece of meat and cut what was left out out, out of the mouth. <laughs> so that was the typical way of eating by the gaucho. Yeah, especially for fighting. That's probably the the thing most kept in mind in this type of knife. See the cross piece here protecting your hand. They were very skillful at fighting with these and the thing is that you were fighting against someone that had this same type of knife as well. So you had to keep your hand protected and you had to be very skillful so as, so as to not get killed during a fight. Imagine that with this type of blade, imagine the penetration you're getting, you're basically going through a guy all over if you're stabbing someone in the gut with this and it's still very practical as well if I may say so for for barbecues and such I can see how it is very comfortable to, to use because you keep your your hands out of the fire here in Argentina we, we our version of barbecue is called asada and we make it with with charcoal or or wood so it you just uh, lay the meat all over there and it's easy to get burned if you have a very short knife a very short knife is not good something as uh, long as this is better. Now let's take a look at the typical survival knife. So we're talking about different uses for your knife. This would be a typical survival knife. This is a bookmaster. This is a bit of a classic. It is very heavy and look at the thickness this thing has. This is A2 steel which is, I think it's, it's stainless. It's not especially, it's not considered stainless but it is as close as it gets to stainless without calling it that way because it had to be resistant to salt and such. It was designed with the intention of being provided to Navy SEALs. What type of grind is this? This is hollow grind. Remember what we were talking before? The different type of grinds. It would be this one. So I was saying before this is only found mostly in custom made knives and handmade knives because this is much easier made with uh, machinery. You have a grinder here, you have a grinder on this side and out of a piece of steel you get this shape. Same thing here, you, you put a, a flat grinder on this side, a flat one on this side or here and here and you can easily make these two. This is not easy to make with, uh, with uh, industrial machinery. This will often require hand 
a hand finish and being shaped by hand it's not as easy to have a, a belt grinder going around this way and this way and creating this pumpkin seed type of shape so yeah well this is very sturdy and it's very thick because it's hollow grind because it's this sort of grind if you use this knife a lot you're gonna be eating up your edge pretty fast uh, for something that's intended for survival purposes something like this will mean that it's gonna be aging much better as you start using it up the steel so yeah what's the purpose of this knife general purpose uh, for wilderness survival and it's clearly an intention for combat as well so you have a very big heavy knife with a very narrow tip that's gonna be penetrating nicely better than this yeah, I like this knife, but it's not going to be my first choice. If something like that is what I have in mind, is what I would have in mind, I would go with something like this. That I've often recommended the cold steel machete. This is the cold steel Bowie machete, the shorter one, 12 inch version. Look at the size of this blade. It is very narrow. I mean, it's, it is thin, but it's not narrow. It's very wide, actually. And because of that geometry being very thin, but at the same time being wide, on the spine makes it a gives it the typical machete shape so it will chop very well this knife will chop and did very well and if you stab someone with this well th there's no explanation needed it is very effective in that regard as well the only thing that is missing this knife is a good guard but the grip is very rubbery it feels rubbery in your hand and it grips very well so it's not going anywhere Some of the knives I've seen recently by Gerber, I saw the Bear Grill survival knife, I don't know if anyone caught that one, saw that one on, on YouTube or something like that. The Bear Grill survival knife is, well, it is pretty much like this shape, but it has um, a pommel that is advertised as being a hammer. The thing is that a lot of people <laughs> found out that when they started hammering anything, it broke apart, so it broke away the hammer piece and it was very nicely designed because it had like a knurling so it had a, had a non-slip surface of some sort but it, it was all plastic over here and it wasn't connected to the blade as this knife is this is a Damascus blade made of different layers of steel and with this blade you can indeed hammer and it's not going to be falling apart in your hand now, what about survival knives and the type of steel being used? Some some people will look at you with the all-knowing <laughs> stare and say, a survival knife must be carbon steel, and drop that piece of wisdom on you like some gift. What happens is that many of the best survival knives aren't carbon steel they are in fact stainless steel so that goes out the door pretty quickly the idea the, the preconception that stainless steel isn't any good guys Spyderco Endura VG10 that's stainless steel this is stainless steel and it is in fact excellent steel uh, Fall knife and F1 Sweden made survival knife excellent survival knife by all accounts that's also stainless steel so and it's it, it, they are using this same steel they are using VG10 they used to use I think it was ATS 34 maybe but now they're using VG10 as well so you have steels like VG10 like ATS 55 ATS 34 you have S30 V which is this steel right here and these are excellent steels for any type of knife and including a survival knife as well so the idea that stainless steel is of no use for a survival knife that it just isn't true some of the best survival knives are made of stainless steel and the idea of a, of a carbon steel blade such as this one or such as this one being the best option in terms of a survival knife in terms of a, of a good quality sturdy knife it's it's not true anymore there are of course good stainless steels I'm not saying that there aren't you have something like this this is a 5160 non stainless steel you have Infi steel that is it is one of the best steels in the world and 
it has it, 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 it's not stainless even though that could be arguable at a point because it's not high carbon steel either Infi steel which is the best steel you can find in the world these days it has 0.5% worth of carbon and that's low for for a knife it's it's not a carbon steel as well okay it's not stainless steel but it's not carbon steel as either d10 guys something used by some of the best knife makers in the world that has 12% worth of, of chromium that kind of percentage of chromium makes it stainless steel they may call it semi stainless steel uh, as if being ashamed of the name but it doesn't change the fact that amount, the amount of chromium in D2 steel makes it stainless by, by any standard yeah you have non stainless steels you have A2 steel which is used here this is A2 if I remember well you have 1095 steel but the truth is and that's just something that I want people to keep in mind is that stainless steel is perfectly adequate for survival knives and in fact many and most of the best survival knives you'll find these days are in fact made of stainless steel and not high carbon steel okay so that's it for now guys and I'll see you on our final video